Hi, welcome to the Mathematics of the Learned Hand formula. Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at the Learned Hand formula, which is this possibly mysterious looking expression that involves the quantities b, p, and l. This is a formula that was written down by Judge Learned Hand in the case United States versus Carroll Towing Company in 1947. Now, while this formula has its origin in a legal case, we're not going to be looking at it in the context of legal issues. As you might know if you're a fan of this channel, I'm a particle physicist and not a lawyer, so no part of this video is in any way legal advice. So you might be wondering why we're going to be talking about the learned hand formula. Well, the learned hand formula is related to probability and statistics, which are topics that we talk about a lot on this channel. The formula is important for things like insurance and risk analysis. So we're going to be looking at the formula from this point of view, and we will ignore any legal applications. So we'll explain why one would write down this formula and do a couple of examples. We'll also look at some complications to these simple examples toward the end of the video. Okay, so let's take a look at that formula. So let's say that there's some type of accident that might happen in the future. Also, let's say that there is some specific action which can be taken which will prevent this accident. The learned hand formula addresses, at least for very simple scenarios, whether or not actions should be taken to prevent the accident. We'll come back to some complications near the end of the video. Okay, so here's the learned hand formula. Let's look at what each of the quantities in this formula is. So first of all, P is the probability of the accident occurring. L is the harm that would be caused by the accident if it occurs. So L has a monetary value. L is measured in, say, dollars. B is the burden of preventing the accident. So this is how much it would cost to prevent the accident. B is also measured in, say, dollars. Now, if B is greater than PL, then the preventative action should not be taken. On the other hand, if B is less than PL, then the preventative action should be taken. Okay, so why would one invent this formula? Well, if the scenario were repeated many, many times, this formula for deciding whether or not to take the preventative action would minimize the cost that you get by summing over all of those repetitions of the scenario. Another way of putting this is that the formula minimizes the cost that you get by averaging over all of those repetitions. That average is what is known as the expected cost. Okay, let's take a slightly more concrete look at what we just said. Let's say the scenario is repeated n times. If we choose to prevent the accidents, the total cost of prevention is b, the cost to prevent the accident once, times n, the number of repetitions of the scenario. However, if we choose not to prevent the accident, the calculation is slightly more complicated. The probability of the accident is p, so of the n repetitions, the accident will happen in n p of them. Each time the accident happens, it incurs a cost l. So the cost of the instances in which the accident occurs is n p l. On the other hand, the probability of the accident not occurring in a given repetition is 1 minus p, so there are n 
times 1 minus p instances in which the accident does not occur. These have a cost of 0. So the total cost over the n repetitions of not preventing the accident is n p l. So if b is less than p l, it's cheaper to prevent the accidents. And if b is greater than p l, it's cheaper to not prevent the accidents. Now let's remember that b is the cost to prevent the accident and p l is the expected cost of not preventing the accident. So again, that's the cost of not preventing the accident when averaged over the n repetitions of the scenario. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. Here's our first hypothetical scenario. So let's say that NASA has found an asteroid on a possible collision course with Earth. They calculate the probability that it will hit the Earth as 1 in 20,000. And if it hits the Earth, they estimate the resulting loss to be valued at $40 trillion. Now, they can deflect the asteroid to a trajectory that is much less likely to be dangerous. But the mission will cost $400 million. If one follows the learned hand formula, will they conclude NASA should or should not launch the mission? Okay, so let's look at the two options, preventing and not preventing the asteroid collision. So let's look at the cost of prevention. That's B, that's $400 million. And let's compare that with the average cost of not preventing the collision. So that's PL, so P was one in 20,000, and L was $40 trillion. We multiply those two together and get $2 billion. So in this case, it's cheaper on average to prevent the asteroid colliding with the Earth. Okay, let's look at another hypothetical scenario. Let's say that you inherit a vase worth $10,000, but you also have a big clumsy dog that has broken many fragile things around your house. You estimate the probability that your dog will break the vase at 1%. Now, you can buy a dog-proof display case that will protect the vase for $120. If you want to minimize your expected cost, should you buy the display case? And let's assume that the only two options that you're considering are buying the display case or doing nothing. Okay, so the cost of prevention, B, is $120. That's the cost of the display case. The average cost of not preventing the accident, PL, is $10,000, the value of the vase, times 1%, the probability you assign that your dog will break the vase. And we multiply those two together and get $100. So in this scenario, it is cheaper to not prevent the accident, on average. Okay, so let's discuss a few issues related to the previous examples. So the learned hand formula is very simple, but unfortunately life is complicated. If we want to think about risk in real life scenarios, there are considerations we might want to take into account that aren't covered in a straightforward way by the formula. Okay. So the first issue that we can discuss is that P and L might actually be very hard to evaluate. So the formula requires being able to estimate probabilities and quantify possible losses. And that might not be a straightforward thing to do. So let's take another look at our asteroid example. There, the estimated loss, if the asteroid collided with the Earth, was $40 trillion. 
Now, coming up with an estimate for that loss presumably implies putting monetary values on human lives. And doing something like that is not straightforward. Okay, next, in a realistic scenario, there might be multiple risks that you want to take into account, and there also might be multiple preventative options. So if the goal is to minimize the expected cost, you should look at all possible risks, not just a single scenario, and you should also look at all preventative options. So let's go back to the vase example. So in that example, we only considered one possible risk to the vase, which was that the dog would break it. And we only looked at one possible preventative measure, which is that you could buy a display case. Now, a more involved analysis would include taking into consideration other threats to the vase. So the vase might break in an earthquake, other members of your family might break it, etc. And that analysis would also include considering other remedies. So you might put the vase in a closet or on a high shelf where the dog can't touch it, etc. In principle, the decision should include all of this information. Okay, next, you might want to take into account special considerations for large losses. So there might be an increased desire to prevent large, devastating losses. If we think about the asteroid example, it may be judged that the destruction caused by the asteroid, if it hits the Earth, is more than what the human race is prepared to allow. We can also think about the vase scenario. So if the vase's value happens to be a large fraction of your net worth, and you plan to sell that vase to pay for your college tuition, the value you attach to the vase may be larger than a naive estimate of its monetary value. In such situations, instead of minimizing the expected cost, it might be more desirable to avoid the worst case scenario. Okay, and lastly, there might be unintended side effects of your preventative measure. So the preventative measures that you choose to take or not take might have important side effects. For example, let's say you pay money to have a safety feature installed in your car. If you will allow the knowledge of the safety features installation to affect the quality of your driving, that should be taken into account in the decision to install the safety feature or not install the safety feature. Okay, so let's briefly summarize. Here we looked at the mathematics behind the learned hand formula. It's a basic formula useful when choosing to implement or not implement a specific measure to prevent a specific accident. It's an important basic relation in risk analysis. The formula chooses the option which, averaged over a large number of iterations, has the lowest cost. However, for more complicated risk analysis scenarios, a naive application of the formula may not be adequate.